Yeah, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on New Testament Survey. Today, we would be studying on the first and second Timothy. So even before we could start, can I request one of us to lead us in prayer? Uh, Rosalind, uh, is it possible that you could lead us in prayer? Is your mic working, Rosalind? Can you lead us in prayer? Anita, how about you? Yeah, ma'am, I'll pray. Yes, Anita, thank you. Dear, he <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for each one of us, Lord. Thank you that you have given this day to us, Lord. I would like to give each one of us into your hand, Lord. As we are learning from your word, Lord, help us to understand from your word, Lord. Help us to learn uh, as Pastor, uh, Pastor Diana is teaching us, Lord. I would like to give her into your hand, Lord. Thank you for each one of us. As others are joining, Lord, help us to give them a good internet connection, Lord, as they are joined, Lord. And I request each, I, I would like to ask you to bless each one of us, Lord. Thank you yes, for Lord. your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Yes, I think there's some internet problem. Okay. Okay. So today we're going to study on first and second Timothy. So this uh, these both the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy is the book of the ministry. It is the qualification and the teachings, and it is also known as the pastoral epistle. That is both uh, the letter to Timothy and the letter to Titus are uh, been called the pastoral epistle because of the fact that, sorry, there's a house flyer. Just give me a minute, please. Thank you. Yeah. So both the letters, the first, second Timothy and Titus have been called as the pastoral epistle because of the fact that they were written to men who were involved in the pastoral ministry at the time of the writing. And so here we see that Timothy was the recipient of these letters from Paul. Um, just to look a uh, background of Timothy. Timothy was born in Lystra. When we study the book of Acts in chapter 16 verse 1, we see that Timothy was born in Lystra and Timothy's mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. Both Timothy's mother Eunice and his grandmother, Lois, were strong believers. And, you know, they had this godly influence in his life. Uh, we read that. Can I request one of us to please turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 5? We can get to read a few scriptures together. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Thank you. Thanks, John. So what we see, we see that both his mother and his grandmother were strongly rooted in the word, and they had this godly influence in his life. 
So he most likely came to Christ on Paul's first visit to Lystra at about, these are the approximate ages, approximately at the age of 15. We see that in 1 Timothy chapter 1, he says to Timothy, uh, Paul addresses Timothy as his true son in faith. Paul utilized Timothy as an assistant and traveling companion on his second missionary journey uh, and about for, for about seven years. And Paul also used him, uh, used him to visit churches in his behalf. He assigned certain important tasks when it came to ministry and churches to Timothy because he trusted him. He, uh, you know, he looked at Timothy as a spiritual son, as a son in faith. He related to him. And so he sent Timothy to the churches on his behalf and he prepared him in the ministry. Uh, he always was a man, uh, you know, Paul was a man who encouraged Timothy to grow as a strong leader in the church. We also see in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, that for this reason I have sent Timothy to you, he says, uh, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. So um, he kept, Paul kept Timothy in his inner circle. So one way, yes, he taught him. And also the other way is uh, learning through uh, um, you know, by watching the way of life, watching Timothy learned many things by watching Paul, the way he led people, the way he preached, the way he prayed by being a life example. And uh, Timothy had an opportunity to travel with Paul for many years. And Timothy developed a very close relationship with Paul and he was considered as son in faith. And uh, we also see uh, he, uh, he was with Paul. Timothy was with Paul in Rome during his first Roman imprisonment. And Paul's release, he accompanied, uh, during the Paul's release, Timothy accompanied Paul to Ephesus where he seems to have been placed in charge of a church at Ephesus. And he seems to have remained there to pastor that church while Paul continued with his work elsewhere. So Paul trusted him so much and he gave him the responsibility, a great responsibility of, you know, leading a church. And he also encouraged Timothy, don't look at your age, don't look that uh, you're young, how can I lead people of much older to him? But then uh, look at the spiritual side. And he encouraged uh, Timothy. He, he was backing up Timothy in all the areas. And we will look at it in detail much later. Uh, yes. Um, so the tradition says that Timothy died as a martyr under the hand of the Romans. And also we see that Paul's love for Ephesians church and this continued discipleship of Timothy as the pastor. With that, we will move on to the next. Where was this letter written? Where was this letter, first and second Timothy written? Anyone from the class would like to add? Yes, Brother Lubega. Okay, you said it is in Rome. Others? I think the second Timothy was uh, the last epistle of Paul. He was in prison wanting to see Timothy. Correct. Okay. So while there are many different viewpoints concerning the actual date or writing of these letters, but all are in agreement that they were some of the last of Paul's books to be written. Like the first Timothy was most likely written after Paul's release from Roman imprisonment while he was carrying his work. And we see that Timothy has been placed as a pastor at the church at Ephesus and Paul was ministering in other places. So this book would have most likely written sometime between 60 to to 64 AD, while 2 Timothy 
was written during Paul's second Roman imprisonment. So which would lead up to his death. So it is his last book to be written and would be dated 64 to 66 AD. And there is no question that Paul knew that this would be his last book and that his death was imminent. He ends on a very, um, very personal note in this letter by giving his final greetings or reference to um, at least not less than 23 individuals in this letter. So with that, what is the central theme of this letter? Anyone in the class, what is the theme of this letter? We can refer to our notes. It's good for us to refer. So when we refer, when we read, we will remember the theme of each book. I'm just confirming all of us have the PDF version of these notes, right? I see Lubega posted a message. Yeah, qualities of church leaders. Okay, others. Okay. So if any of you all in the class do not have the notes, please feel free to let me know so that I can resend the notes to you. It is also available on Google Classroom. Please go and download the notes because we need to read. Yes, we need to attend the class at the same time when we read, the learning is much better. Okay, so we see the theme of the book of First and Second Timothy. So in these letters, we see that Paul deals with the kind of things that pastors must face in the ministry, in particular in relation to his son in faith. That is Timothy. So a key verse that reveals the main intent of Paul's letter is found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. Can I request one of us to read chapter 3, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14. Although I hope to come to you soon, I am writing about these instructions so that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God and the pillar and the foundation of truth. Thank you, Sid. Yes, we see that in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, we see that these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly, but... If I'm delayed, I write to you so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. So in First Timothy, we see some issues. It is related to the church. Brother Lobega has put in the qualities of true church leaders has been dictated in these letters. Yes. So some of the issues we see in First Timothy is resisting the error and false doctrine that was creeping into the church by the false teachers. And some of them were the, those, the Jews who were against Paul. The second was guidelines for prayer and public worship. When we see study uh, chapter 1, in First Timothy chapter 1, we see how to resisting, resist the error and the false doctrine. And in chapter 2, we see there are two issues that Paul is addressing. One is the guidelines for prayer and public worship in the first part of chapter 2. And the second part of chapter 2, we see that he's giving us the guidelines for women in the service. And in chapter 3, Paul is addressing guidelines for selecting elders and deacons in the church. And when we come to chapter 4, we see that he is, addressing, he is warning against the false doctrines that has been circulated in the church. 
along with some personal challenges to Timothy and the pastor of the church. And in chapter 5, we see that uh, Paul is stating the guidelines for the treatment of church members, including the older saints and widows. And the other is the treat treatment of the elders in the church. And in chapter 6, he's giving us a guideline for the master and slave relationship, along with a warning about the love of money and instructions to the rich. And with that, we will move on to certain issues, even in uh, Paul is addressing in 2 Timothy. That is the personal instructions to Timothy as a good leader, which talks about do not be ashamed of the gospel. Stand fast in the word of God. Be strong in his grace. And in chapter 2, he talks about be diligent in the work of the Lord. Flee from the youthful lust along with He's stating that avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. And in chapter 3, he warns us about the apostasy in the last days. So with that, we will move on to the unique features of this book. So it is Timothy's character and personality are seen within the context of these books. That is, when we... When we uh, read First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve, can I request one of us to turn to First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve? First Timothy. Yes, sir. First Timothy chapter four and verses twelve. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Yes. Here we see Paul encouraging Timothy as, Timothy, uh, as you know, don't discourage yourself, even though you may be young, but position in which you are serving. You need to honor that. Don't look at your physical age, but then look at the spiritual side. God has given you the authority and lead the people. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 12, he says, Timothy was naturally a shy and a timid person. So here we see Paul encouraging Timothy to stir up the gift that is in him. So unlike Timothy, we also need to look at ourselves. We need to be encouraged. Um, don't look at ourselves as too young to lead people as the Lord is leading us, as the Lord is instructing us, or let us stir the gift that is within us, as Paul encourages Timothy. Uh, Paul also says to Timothy that to shake off the spirit of fear. Most of the time we have this um, kind of fear within us to speak, to utter, or be more conscious about ourselves or what the other person would think. And Many times, because of such fear, we tend to remain quiet from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here, Timothy, or, uh, sorry, Paul also encourages Timothy not to be ashamed of the gospel. Not to be ashamed. Yes, there are a lot of opposition in this world, but then go ahead and share. Be bold enough because it is an heavenly message being delivered by an earthly vessel. So do not worry. You may come across the opposition, but then stir up this gift that is in you. Be bold and, and share the gospel. We see uh, Timothy uh, did not handle stress and the pressure of the ministry well. But then uh, we see the encouragement of Paul to Timothy. Can I request one of us to turn? First Timothy chapter five verse twenty three, please. No, First Timothy, only, only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. So even when Timothy was not well. You know, uh, Paul was there to encourage him and he guided him what he needs to take. And, 
and Timothy may have had a tendency toward philosophical pursuits. Know that many uh, admonitions about avoiding such things like uh, reject seducing spirit and doctrines of the devil that will cause some to depart from the faith. And Timothy chapter 4, he states, don't listen to fables and endless genealogies that do not build faith and cause many to stray from the truth. We see that in First Timothy chapter one, verse four to seven, and in First Timothy chapter four, verse six to seven, we see that Paul's saying to Timothy, reject the old wife fables which are contrary to faith. And in First Timothy chapter six, twenty to twenty one, we see that uh, Paul saying, avoid the contradiction of what is falsely called science or knowledge. When cause some to astray from the faith. And he also says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 16 to 18, Paul is saying, shun profane and vain babbling that overthrow the faith of some. So we see that when we read these two letters, we see that Timothy had faced a lot of challenges in the ministry. being a young man to lead a church with elders and widows and each one may want to supersede him each one may want him to hear to their voice it would have been quite challenging for timothy as a young man as a young pastor not easy but then paul is encouraging timothy just like how Paul, Apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy, today Apostle Paul is encouraging each of us through this letter because even we have been set aside for God's work in his kingdom. Let these two letters encourage us as we study them through. Paul also gives a true list of leadership qualification in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 13. And we can also see some of it in the letter to Titus, chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. So what is it? We see that God is very particular when it comes to choosing who is to oversee his house. Because it is God's house. He wants to be the one who selects those who will preside over it. So in the economy of God, no one just decides to be an overseer. But God he is very particular. He chooses men. He calls. He calls them out. The way God called out Abraham. There were so many. But God chose Abraham. Though Abraham in his own being thought that, you know, yes, God said he will bless me with a son. So uh, there is no possibility with Sarah. So both of them, Sarah and Abraham, decide to have a child through Hagar. But then again, God was very particular. My seed that I will bring out the nation is not from your way, my way. There is a time, there is a season. What God said he did in Abraham's life. The same way we see how God called out Moses. How God called out David. When we see all this, we can also look at our own life. How God called each of us. Was it in our plan that one day we will serve God in our younger days? Not too sure, not many. But here, God calls us, calls us out. And he sets assignment. He sets a region. He, he has a task. He has a call. He has a purpose to be fulfilled in each place. So everything gets orchestrated according to God's plan. So there are qualifications that all elders must have which include the moral, domestic, and spiritual, 
gifting related to in that area. We see that Paul writes in First Timothy chapter three verse two. He says we will look at these. Um, you know, uh, he says how important are these areas, and we will look at these more closely when we study the book of Titus. Right now, Paul. Uh, you know, gives an outline what qualifies a widow for assistance from the local church. When we uh, can I request each of us to turn to First Timothy chapter five, verse three to sixteen. Chapter five, First Timothy chapter five. So we see that in order for a widow to be considered in the church, there are certain criteria. That she should hold in her life. That is, she should have no children or grandchildren to support her. She would be a woman of prayer, looking to God for miraculous supply. She must be uh, living as uh, uh, she must be living a frugal life, not uh, indulging in anything else. She should be over 60 years of age. She must have been faithful in marriage to one man. She must be noted for a good works, raising godly children. Uh, she must be hospitable, work of service to others, and in charitable in her deeds. She must be noted as diligent worker, not given to idleness. Paul also gives us a great description of salvation that we have in Jesus Christ in 1 Timothy chapter 16, verse 19. Can I request one of us to read? Anita, can you read? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 19. Yes, ma'am, I'll read. Uh, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Amen. So Paul gives a great description of salvation is through Jesus Christ alone that they may hold up, that uh, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of life that is truly life. And Paul highlights six different loves that may control the path of one's life in both the letters, in 1 Timothy and in 2 Timothy. What is that six different loves that may control the path of one's life? In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 9 to 10, we see that the love of money, then there's a love of self, then the love of pleasure, Fourth is the love of the world, and fifth is the love of God, and sixth is the love of His appearing. So obviously we want the last two loves in our life, isn't it? The love of God and the love of His appearing. So we see that in um, Second Timothy chapter 2, Paul describes the many roles of a matured believer. So what are the... Um, uh, what is expected from a matured believer? A matured believer must be a faithful man, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He must be an athlete, athlete in a sense, active, running on with a goal in mind to do God's work. Then fourth, we see that he must be a hardworking farmer. What does it mean? Anyone in the class, what does Paul mean when he says that we need to be hardworking farmer? Anyone in the class? Understanding the seasons, when to sow, when to reap. Thanks, John. Anyone else? Um, like when I read about the farmer in this verse, suddenly my mind goes to that verse when Jesus is saying, like harvest is many, but the farmers, but the laborers are less. So we have to more work so that the souls, we can save it, save them for Jesus. Yes, 
Yes. Anyone else? Give different views. Anyone? Thanks, John. Thanks, Sid. Anyone? What does farmer do? We need to be hard working as a farmer. As John said, we need to know the season and the time. As um, Sid said, the laborers are few and the harvest is huge and the laborers are few. So we need to increase the laborers. Yes. Anyone else? Farmers are very hard working. Yes, brother. That's right. Anyone else? Brother Lubega, Anita, Jeffina. Yes, brother Lubega. I have posted my comment in the in, in on the web, but let me say I think for here it has got so many diversions, but I think I mean it has so many meanings. I think he was literally saying that a pastor or a bishop in church should not depend entirely on the on the income of the church. So he should be able to sustain his own family and his own daily uh, subsistence income that can sustain his life, not depending on the income of the church. That is also another view. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Yes, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to add on? Yes. No, yes, Anita, after Anita, Sid can add. Yes, Anita, please unmute and go ahead. Ma'am, I think what the, what farmer do is uh, he used to sow the seed in a good ground. And I mean, he used to do so many works before that. He used to uh, uh, take that uh, tractor and all these. Uh, I mean, he has to take uh, check the mud, how it is. Then he sows the seed and to check the water level, then... Um, then to take care of whatever the extra things comes in the uh, farm, so he has to remove. It means that uh, same as uh, how Jesus described in the sowing the seed parable, like we have yes. to take care of the seed uh, where it uh, falls down, which ground it falls down. So farmer, I mean, uh, by saying this, uh, Paul wants to say that we have to, while sharing the gospel, we have to take care of all these things, like where. Uh, what kind of uh, how much water we have to sow like uh, uh, give all these things now yes yes anita thank you thank you for describing the whole process of a farmer that's exactly i guess what paul was stating here as well sid you would like to add ma'am i just wanted to share that what anita didi shared i rest my case now <laughs> thanks thanks Ed. yes exactly uh farmer works from the very scratch he tills the ground he breaks the ground he makes it ready for the seed to be sown and when the seed is sown and when it sprouts and grows we need to you know nurture that we need to guard that and at the same time we need to know the water level uh you know how much water to be fed and how it is and once it grows to be a mature plant then you can allow it to grow or independently yes that's exactly what it is a very hard work hard work from the scratch it's a very hard work just like how brother subhashish said farmers are very hard working the same way god is asked uh, i mean paul is a uh, stating that as a leader we need to be hard working need to work hard from the scratch we need to build certain things the ground may not be ready so we need to be ready to put our hands into the plow and prepare the ground to sow the right seed the minute you know the soil is perfect then start sowing the seed and our work is not over we need to guard that and then we need to protect it nurture that and then in fifth point, we see uh, an approved worker in 2 Timothy 2.15. So being a mature believer, you need to be an approved worker. When we look at the believer's life, it needs to be, he needs to be uh, as a vessel of honor, honorable to man and to God. And the last point, the seventh point is, a servant of the Lord, 
second timothy chapter 2 verse 24 you need to be a servant of the lord with that in second timothy chapter 4 he says paul gives an insight into a natural situation and coming death and i request one of us to turn to second timothy chapter 4 verse 6 to 8 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 For I am already being poured out like a drink offering and the time has come for my departure. I have fought that good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me in the crown of the righteousness which the Lord the righteous just will award me with that on the day and not only to me but all those who have longed for his appearing. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. So we see that Paul is speaking of his readiness to die and finish his course or finished his course on this earth and prepared for that heavenly glory to receive the crown of righteousness. Following verse from 9 to 15, we see that Paul talks about the relationships of both good and bad. And then in the same chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, Paul talks about his first defense before Caesar that did not go well. And in verse 17 to 19 in chapter 4, he acknowledges that he is in the hands of the Lord. And in the same chapter, chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, we see that Paul gives his final charge to Timothy. I would like to share some things about what Paul is saying. Timothy must share in the suffering for the gospel. So just like how Paul is sharing to Timothy, Paul is also sharing to each one of us as a believer, as a matured leader, how we need to conduct ourselves in God's kingdom, in the church, in the ministry, the area where God has called each one of us. So Paul is encouraging Timothy by saying, share in the suffering for the gospel. Because through such sharing, others will be saved. So this reminds us like how Stephen, the first martyr, he endured the, he en endured the uh, death by stoning. But the very eyewitness person was Apostle Paul who was against Stephen. But then he was touched and his life was changed. So Paul is writing all this with his own experience. And much later also we see when the revival broke in Wales, we see many missionaries who spread out to different parts of the earth, who wants to minister and share the gospel. And in that incident, few missionaries came to India, our own country, and they landed in Assam and they ministered to a tribal people i don't know how they could communicate to them despite the language but they tried to minister to this tribal people who were very violent in nature so among them one tribal family received jesus as the lord and savior and when his life changed he started ministering to the other tribal, uh, 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 other tribal people in his own community. And slowly the gospel started spreading and everyone started to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. So what happened now? This scared the chief of the tribe. So the chief of the tribe wanted to put an end to this foreign um, 
religion that has been spreading in this community. He called the first family who received and who was converted. Um, uh, he, he brought them to that, uh, we call it in India, we call it as Panchayat. Okay, so where everyone comes together for this meeting in front of the whole community, this leader looks at this man called Nok Seng. He tells him, refuse this God and come out. He refuses, he refuses to deny Jesus as the Lord and Savior. So because of that, he has two children. So they, um, you know, uh, he calls the expert in uh, killing the person with the arrow. So they kill these two children at the, um, you know, at the end of the arrow. And then now they say, if you don't, deny Jesus, we are going to kill your wife. And then he says, uh, you know, that is when uh, the song he, uh, is has been born. He says such words like, um, can anyone help me with this lyrics? I have decided to follow Jesus. John, what is the lyrics? I didn't happen to share this. But the suddenly world behind me, the cross before me. Um, yes, I'll give you the exact words. I'm sorry, it just came to my mind when we spoke about suffering to the gospel, to what extent this person had gone for. So when he, uh, when, uh, when the boys, okay, was dead, he said, I have decided to follow Jesus, so I cannot refuse him. Uh, you know, I, I cannot... Uh, I'm just trying to take the song. Just give me a minute, please. So as, uh, as he cannot renounce his faith publicly and he has received, so he was moved with the Holy Spirit and he said, I've decided to follow Jesus. And uh, uh, so uh, they killed two sons. And then again, he says, can you renounce your faith now? If not, now the arrow will knock down your wife. Your wife will join your sons. And then he says, though none joins me, still I will follow. And then they kill his wife as well. Now the arrow points at him. And he says, can you renounce now? So he says, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back no turning back and now he's been killed so what happened something happened in this whole incident something happened to the chief of that community what is that power what is that faith in him that he could not renounce jesus who's a foreign god or foreign man who lived two thousand years ago this man has not even seen him so there is something in it. Spontaneously, something happened to the chief. And what happened? He, he confessed out of faith. He declared that I too belong to Jesus Christ. And when the crowd heard this from the chief, from the mouth of their chief, the whole village accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's how this song is based on the last words of Noxang, a man from Garo tribe of Assam. And now it is Meghalaya and some part of Assam. So this testimony is available on YouTube. I would encourage each of you all to please go through and read it so that we can be in great. So sharing in suffering for the gospel's sake will definitely bear much fruit. This is what Paul encourages out of his own experience. And it is so true even now. That is what I wanted to share. So, And also Paul goes ahead and tells Timothy in chapter 1, verse 13. He says, continue in sound doctrine. 
Yes, because there were a lot of false doctrines spreading and leading to ungodliness. He's encouraging Timothy, don't worry. Do not say what is right, what is wrong. Do not. Uh, we don't have to focus on the false doctrine, but he is stressing on this. Continue on teaching the truth because the scripture says the truth will set them free. That's what Paul emphasized Timothy to do. Be focused on the truth, on the sound doctrine. Flee youthful lust. Flee youthful lust because he must be cleansed and set apart for the master's use. Very, very important. Very important. God was with Joseph so that he could run away from every lust, every danger that came to him. We, as we have set us apart for the Lord's use from such things, we need to flee. Maybe it is difficult, but let's hold on to God because he can strengthen our weaknesses and help us to set ourselves apart from such lust. It can be any area. It can be any area. Avoid contentiousness because we must be gentle and lead others to the truth, to the good news. So gentleness is again the gift of the Spirit. We need to seek God to improve in such area because it is important. It is needed, this mandate for us to be gentle as leaders. Timothy must militantly preach the gospel. Great because there is a great apostasy is coming. Be focused and preach the gospel boldly. Very important. So today, as we study this, both the letters, can we reflect on uh, certain areas that Paul is writing this letter, knowing that he is nearing his death in 2 Timothy. And he, his focus is not on himself, but he's explaining all the wrong done to him. But at the same time, he's thinking of others as well. And at the same time, he is encouraging Timothy to be the next leader and to be strong. So let's ponder, let's ponder. What do we hope we would be thinking when we are nearing to our death? Will, will we be able to say the same words like what Paul said? I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So as leaders, as believers, we have been called to serve the Lord at different areas. So let's examine ourselves in the area where God has called us and ask this question to ourselves. As I say that, even I'm asking about myself, I'm just examining like, have I fought the good fight? Have I finished the race? Have I kept the faith? This is the progress and this race will go till the end. We need to continue. We need to Continue, hold on to Jesus every day, seek him. We need his grace to handle each and every day. And be encouraged to be a good leader and be rooted in the sound doctrine, the sound word. This is what Paul is encouraging each of us as a leader. Develop a good character, which is very important because it's only the character that can hold the anointing. And he also encourages as leaders, we need to set ourselves as an example for others and hold on to Jesus through the suffering. Share the gospel. Do not give up on that and hold on to him. And preach the gospel. Preach it with boldness. Trust on Jesus for the fruit. 
with that i end this letter of first and second timothy i keep this open for the class to share add or discuss on anything before we could end this class with a word of prayer thanks john for the lyrics that's a beautiful song anyone would like to add okay okay i think it's all clear so can i request one of us to please pray we'll pray today and close the session can i re- yes said go ahead let's pray father we come to the throne of great lord thank you for this day you have given us lord lord whatever we have done from the book of timothy lord as he have done lord lord whatever the paul has wrote whatever the author paul has written lord whatever we have learned in this book lord lord let should it should not be wasted lord your lord our learning it should not be wasted but it should be added to the for the ministry lord whatever we the ministry or we are currently doing or we will be doing in the future lord it should be done in a marvelous way lord so so that we can win souls for you in jesus name lord thank you for this hour lord we are we have spent in your learning lord thank you for the teacher thank you for all the students in jesus name i pray amen Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all next week. Until then, request you all to please go through your notes, read and be prepared. God bless. See you all.